Who's that guy? That's that's Patrick. What does he do? Is he a saint? No, that's that's a different Patrick. Are we on the radio? Well, yeah, we're on the radio. We're actually on a podcast. Really? Podcast? I like it. Hi, hi, mister. How are you? My name is Bodo Duck. Hi, Bodo. How are you? I'm fantastic. You know what Patrick does, Bono? What? He is a chef. A chef? Yes. Is he vegetarian? I think he can probably cook anything you want. <laughs> wow, that sounds great. Can you uh can you cook uh cucumbers and uh and uh spiders? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't uh cook for ducks no, normally. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. All right, let's get started. My guest today is Sonny Melendrez. He is a voice actor, motivational speaker. Uh, he was also voted by Billboard, okay? Billboard's top radio personality of the year twice. It's an amazing feat just to get it once. He got it twice. Um, so this guy is just a man of many talents, okay? So it's hard to just put him into one box. Uh, He's done acting, he's hosted his own show on Disney, uh, you know, done voices, he does impressions, um, you know, radio shows, motivational speaking, acting, you name it. The guy is just absolutely amazing. I have to say, honestly, this is one of the funnest podcasts I've ever been a guest in uh, because he put on a show. He did some amazing impressions that were just incredible, uh, to be honest with you. Um, so yes, so sit back. This is a really fun episode. You're gonna uh, laugh a lot, learn a lot, and um, just have a good time. It really is just a lot of fun. So yeah, that's what's happening with that. So that's coming up. All right, and uh, before we get to that, as always, you know we do our Bet You Didn't Know That segment from Texas, uh, sponsored by Texas Real Food, uh, because our podcast is sponsored by Texas Real Food, obviously. So, you know, you go to texasrealfood.com and there you can, you know, find all the best, coolest places uh, in Texas based on your zip code. Basically, any place serving like organic, fresh, artisanal stuff. So any farm to table restaurants, butcher, uh, butchers and uh, farmers markets and maybe a shop that does artisanal stuff or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. Not a COVID cough. Um, you know, so yeah, it's a great website. Yeah, you just put in your, your zip code and boom, all that stuff pops up. Really, really cool. So it's like Google for organic stuff uh, in a way. And it's got a lot of information on each of the businesses, you know, within there. So anyway, all right. But on the if you follow on the Instagram, on the social media, you will come across, the, they always put up these fun food facts on the social media. So that, that's what we're going over today. So, all right. So, bet you didn't know that. Number one, there are over 3,500 different uses for corn products. Wow. I bet you didn't know that. That is crazy. So, who knew corn could be used for so much? All right. That is crazy. Uh, so that's number one. All right. Number two, bet you didn't know less than 1% of global cropland is organic. Wow. That is, so not 1% of the earth. Okay. 1% of global cropland. So what, what we already have designated for crops, only 1% of it is organic. That's sad, right? That's sad yeah, when I know that. You know, that doesn't make me, uh, dang, that's okay. That is okay. All right. Uh, bet you didn't know the official state snack of Texas. 
Okay, I'm going to give you a second to guess. What, what do you think the official state snack of Texas is? Yeah, somebody probably get yeah, you know somebody probably got this right all right it is uh tortilla chips and salsa that is just boom that is so texas right there you go to a place get some chips and salsa right off the bat and who doesn't fill up on that how many times at least i have yeah i'm a child i'm five uh i will fill up on chips and salsa and then i can't eat my meal it's like especially if it's good salsa and good chips like they fry the chips there and it's homemade salsa oh my god get out of here and it's usually free Honestly, it's usually free at places, so, um, you know, that is definitely the state snack of Texas, if you will. All right, last, oh, we'll do two more. All right, one more. Uh, bet you didn't know, during the 17th century, pretzels came to symbolize undying love. Right? That is, <laughs> that's kind of funny. <laughs> so imagine you, you didn't used to give a bouquet of roses. Okay, you used to give a girl a pretzel. That's how it would go. It was like, I love you. Here's a pretzel. Right? So times were much easier back then. Um, well, probably not. <laughs> all right. Last uh, bet you didn't know fact. Okay. Bet you didn't know all good farmers. Wait, wait. That's not it. Sorry. <laughs> Tease. Okay, bet you didn't know bananas are healthiest when they are spotty. Huh, I bet you didn't know that. So that's when you probably like, oh, it's going bad. I gotta better eat it. In fact, that's the best time to eat it is right then and there. So you've got a green when it comes out green, right? And it starts to slowly go to yellow. And once it gets the spots, that's the best time to eat it. So there you go. That's actually something practical you could use in your everyday life because that's what we do here on the Lone Star Plate Podcast. Provide practical things you can use in your everyday life. Now you're going to start giving pretzels for Valentine's Day, right? And you're going to say, did you know back in the 17th century, they used to give pretzels uh, to symbolize undying love. <laughs> right? And that's how you'll sound all Shakespearean. Uh, so, okay, that's enough of our segment. Bet you didn't know that. Hope you enjoyed it. All right. And last but not least, I have a fun, cool... Um, th this is uh, basically... It's an article uh, that ca that came out uh, on our website, on the Texas Real Food website. So if you go to uh, texasrealfood.com slash discover... Uh, you'll see it there. And it's basically just a podcast review. So there's another podcast. Ooh, yes, we like to support other podcasts. And there's another, a cool podcast called Thriving Farmer. Okay? And it's, uh, you know, unbelievable. And we've got a cool review on the site there about the podcast, and you can learn uh, more about it. So it's basically just a podcast committed to helping farmers and, you know, discuss... Uh, sustainable farming you know it's the mission to inspire educate and celebrate so a lot you know interviews with expert farmers and innovators educators that that sort of thing uh, really really cool so definitely check that out uh, and check out our review of that as well so all right without further ado um, oh I gotta always do this don't forget our website right go to the lonestarplate.com and you can find out more information about us me the team past episodes right we don't forget on youtube uh we we break them down we break the episodes down into clips so maybe if you can't you know catch the whole episode you can go catch a couple clips uh some you know of the episode um and you know again we're always on apple spotify google podcast amazon podcast you can ask alexa to play the lone star plate just say alexa play the lone star play podcast and then she'll do that right hey google play the the, the and that and it'll happen oh gosh see here it goes my alexa's going alexa stop alexa stop see see how easy that was look at that just showed didn't even mean to do that um and uh yeah so that's really cool so again check us out on youtube texas real food and um yeah that's going to be, oh, you know, real quick, we, we actually just decided in a meeting we just had that we're going to be getting our own YouTube channel. So um, that's going to be great. So we won't be with Texas Real Food anymore. We're going to be splitting off we're, really all of our social media because all of our social media goes through the Texas Real Food stuff. You know, we're, we're all of the podcasts and everything gets posted through there. Um, 
So we're gonna be getting our own, our own social media accounts and our own YouTube channel and everything will be uh, us by ourselves, uh, which is gonna be great. Really, really excited about that, um, to have that. So we've sort of proven ourselves this, this you know, first couple seasons here, this first year that we broke into two seasons, we, we've proven ourselves we can do this and we're gonna go again and we're going strong and you know, we're getting bigger and better and, and better. So, all right, let's just get to the episode. All right, Sonny Melendrez, um, the amazing Sonny Melendrez. I, yeah, I don't know what to say about the guy. Just absolutely um, amazing. Check out his impression of Colombo. It is spot on. I mean, great. Anyway, here we go. Sonny Melendrez. Enjoy. Thank you so much for joining us. Nice control room you got there. Yeah, not not too bad here. This is just the office. Uh, we have the know. same microphone. I love this microphone, I right? Know. Isn't this a great mic? Oh yeah. Oh my god, it's just like the best. Yeah. Yeah. Big upgrade when I change to this for sure. It's yeah, pricey. Buy another one. It is. It is, but it's worth it. You know. Plus, well worth it. It's a write-off. You know. <laughs> there you go. Hey, there you go. Absolutely. I actually bought a uh, cloud lifter for mine. Do you do you use one of those too? Do you know what I that do. is? got it right here yeah exactly yeah i got the same thing mine's down oh, yeah. down below the tent yeah totally that that helped as well uh yeah look at that wow okay cool it's kind of curious if, if that was a good setup or not i just look at other people what they're doing right you I know, know if I they know. <laughs> right i just copy it, like if they figured it out what, what do i exactly. need exactly exactly and you see that a lot do you see that microphone uh, everywhere Joe yeah. Rogan. I saw it on Joe Rogan first. I think yeah. that's the first place I saw it. I was like, okay, well, if he's got it. And then everybody, right, everyone starts to get it. And yeah, like you said, it's a it's a fantastic mic. And that's a nice arm you've got there. This took that, me honestly arm. years to find this. Not joking. Really? Yes. It, it because they only had like really kind of not very good ones to be honest uh -huh. with you available yeah. and you would see them yeah. on other podcasts go where are they getting these like amazing <laughs> boom arms from googling i can't find it there was a right. company out of like sweden that was doing it but they were you know uh, a special order they were like six hundred dollars i mean i was just like oh my god okay i see why but now this this company has released they're like a hundred bucks really they're, it's they're amazing i'm telling you, you should look up frameworks and, and what awesome. is the uh what is it a clamp that uh, so that, they have both you can't see it but i actually have it screwed into my table oh that's good that's but good. you can have the clamp that you're talking about the screw sure. if you don't want it to be permanent uh and it's yeah i mean it's so secure it's nimble it move it's it's awesome i mean i just i can't yeah. tell you what what a big uh that's upgrade it doesn't make any noise either uh, exactly that yeah you're the only person that's ever noticed that and it's like my favorite feature in this whole thing is yeah, this, is this arm quiet. for sure yeah, yeah it's quiet yeah, that's the that's, that's a good point yep well, well awesome um yeah this is awesome man sonny we're just jumping into this i love this this is this is great are we already recording or what this is how i do it sonny this is how <laughs> I, I this is how i roll the show uh, I'm getting ready. I'm saying, what are we going to talk about? Well, when does this start? <laughs> this year is a, a long warm up. <laughs> An hour later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's all the time we have for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been 30 minutes into a podcast before and they're asked uh, did we start already <laughs> and, <laughs> oh that's funny yeah we just go i mean i edit a little but no this know, is nice this is yeah, nice i just keep you it see, easy you have the luxury with podcasts now we can make it as long as we want as short as we want and we can do any. Th there's no format you know yeah. there's no rules whereas yeah. in radio you've got X amount of time, you got commercial breaks, you got all kinds of other things. And, uh, and it's not the same that like this, this is wonderful. But, uh, yeah, you're on a you're on a time crunch, right? You're thinking about the yeah. next setup. And the, yeah, that's a good point. Absolutely. That's why I love podcasts so much uh, for, for that exact reason. Yeah, you're exactly Did you right ever do radio? Uh, I mean, I went to a um, so I went to American Broadcasting School. It's in Arlington, Texas, uh, to yeah. study radio for a year. And I thought I was in my early 20s. Or I was about 20, I guess. Uh, and I thought I was going to do that. And I went to a couple radio stations and I worked. And then I just realized I didn't uh, want to do it <laughs> anymore. And I and then I got into the restaurant industry. So I'm a chef. So I, I did that for forever. And I just. Oh, that's I, great. I, I started this podcast uh this past year so yeah this is sort of sort of new ground yeah for me yeah. in a sense 
Uh, I love the know. format. I, I was on your website and I saw I'm, I'm honored to be here. I mean, I'm in good company with all these these great guests that you've had. We've been very fortunate. I got to tell you, we've been very fortunate. Great team. You know, I, I do the least amount on the show. Let me just say that right now. There's a you big the team. Fun part. Yeah. yeah, I do that. I get to do the fun part. Exactly. It's a big team that makes all that happen. And uh, yeah, shout out to them. They do a great job of, of getting a phenomenal guests, just like yourself. You're in great company. I mean, yeah, you're, just like you said, you're in great company, but they would say the same thing about you. So I'm very excited to uh, have you on and talk to you. I've been reading about you and seeing your stuff and just like, man, what a career you've had, Sonny. I mean, it's unbelievable. I'm, all, I'm almost halfway there, Patrick. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. That is so awesome. And I love that you're a motivational speaker. When I saw that, I thought, man, do we need some inspiration right now uh, during this time more than any normal year that that I'm sure that applies to. But 2020 is no, just we all been, do. We all do. Yeah, it's it's been crazy uh, year. So uh, how has the pandemic affected your career as far as what you've well, through. really, uh, you know, from March to now, you know, all, all of a sudden, all these conferences, everything went away. I was so used to being in front of, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people. And there's nothing like it because you're connecting with an audience, you're connecting with somebody, you're making eye contact, you're doing all kinds of uh, things in the audience. And so this is a whole different, different deal. But because of my background in television, um, I was able to just kind of roll right into it. And I've done several uh, now virtual keynotes that uh, have really worked because of the fact that you're talking to one person at a time. And Patrick, really, that's what radio is. You know, yeah. you don't talk to radio land. You talk to one person and everybody listening thinks you're talking to them. And you are. And yeah. it's the same thing with, with, uh, with this format. You know, anybody watching right now is watching us, but they feel like they're eavesdropping on our conversation. And because we have a, you know, a, a, a really a propensity for wanting to do all this as well as uh, continue on with whatever else you do in your life, you're a chef, everything else, it really all rolls into one. Because, uh, you know, you stop and think about it. When you're a chef, you're no different than a painter. You're no different than a writer or a singer. And then when you perform, you're, you're doing what you do. And then when people give you the applause, you go out into your, uh, into your audience and they, they applaud and they say, it was great. This was wonderful. There's nothing like it, you know, and that's why we do it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that's uh, been tough to miss uh, for sure. It, it, and, you know, just when I was thinking maybe we were going to get to the point now where things could maybe start to open up a little bit and people could maybe, you know, obviously safe, safely and everything, uh, you know, start doing some things again, right? Live shows, uh, you know, conferences, that sort of thing. But yeah, it looks like that's not going to happen till 2021. So I hope the yeah. virtual keynote it'll happen. definitely takes off for you yeah for sure yeah it'll, it'll happen uh, there's no question about that yeah absolutely absolutely so l let's talk a little bit about you know where you've how you've gotten to the point of of where you've gotten like i said you've you've had a just an amazing career um so you started off in radio and then worked your way to tv and sort of squirmed around or or how did I, it I all actually begin did a lot of it at, at the same time i'll yeah. tell you a little story when i was uh i guess 11 years old I knew what I wanted to do. There were three things I wanted to do. Wow. I wanted to I wanted to be on the radio. I you know grew up in San Antonio, and the big station here was KTSa. And I knew that I wanted to be the guy on the radio playing all this great music. And I also knew that I wanted to work for Walt Disney. <laughs> wow. I used to watch the Wonderful World of Disney, the Mickey Mouse Club, and I wanted to be part of that fun. And the third thing, and this kind of happened by accident, I learned, Patrick, at an early age that I had an uncanny ability, if not an obligation, to mimic voices that I heard. I would, I'd be at uh, the grocery store and somebody walked by with an accent and I'd start talking like that. And I'm this kid. And my mom would say, don't do it, don't do that. I said, but mom, that's the way she sounds. <laughs> it's, it just kind of came out of me. And then one day... I was watching my favorite cartoon show, which was Yogi Bear. And, you know, Yogi always had that great persona 
hey, 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 I'm Yogi Bear, smarter than the average bear. And what was his little friend's name? Uh, oh, my gosh. Boo-boo. Boo-boo. That's right. Boo-boo. Yogi, Yogi, we're going to get in trouble with a ranger. Don't worry about a thing, little boo-boo. But what it changed <laughs> for me, I love it. when everything changed for me was when I was watching this one episode and there was a little duck that w- thought Yogi was his mother. And he kept saying, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, would you be my mama? And he was a little orphan duck walking around following Yogi. And this little voice came out of him. And I thought, oh, my, what a great voice. And I thought to myself, and I, keep in mind, I'm, I'm 11 years old. I don't know that the people who do those voices, they're professionals. They've been doing it for years. All I knew that I was going to do that voice. So I turned off the TV. I had a little recorder. I started taping myself and recording it. And it came out real raspy. Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear. I mean, to the point I got a sore throat. And one day, one day out of my little 11-year-old mouth came, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, would you be my mama? I don't have a mama. I'm just a poor little ducky. And that was the beginning of an incredible um, kind of a epiphany that I had, like, oh, my gosh, I can make this guy say anything. So I continued to do all these different voices. And uh, we lived in not in a house, but in the back of my dad's barbershop, actually in the barbershop. My dad had a little two seat barbershop that still the building still stands at the corner of, of Nolan and Pine. If you're from San Antonio on wow. a little strip center on the east side. And wow. my dad partitioned half of the barbershop and we lived in half of that. And, and it wasn't even a full address. Our address was 908 and a half Nolan Street. The other <laughs> half was a print shop. <laughs> and at night, Patrick, my dad would give me because my dad knew, you know, how 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 much I, I love to entertain, how much I love to to do what I did. And I would record these little shows with my recorder and my record player. And those are coming back. I used to be I had to explain what a record player was. But now, <laughs> you know, millennials have them. Yeah. So I, I had a record player and I would mimic the DJ that I would hear on the radio and, and pretend like I was the DJ and I'd put the record on. And while, the, while I was talking and putting it on, I would do the, uh, the patter that the DJs would do. And then I would take that little five minute show and my dad would give me three dimes and I'd go into the barbershop in the dark, sit on the shoe shine stand next to the payphone, And I would dial one friend at a time and play these little shows. I was podcasting. <laughs> that is podcasting. Yeah. That's like, one, oh my one listener, one listener at a time. For wow. all I know, they put the phone down and came back later and said, oh yeah, that was great. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but here's, here's, here's the, wow. here's the kicker. So fast forward. And the reason we lived in the back of the barbershop was so that my dad and my mom could save money to send my brother and me to parochial school, to Catholic school, and also to college. So fast forward, I graduate from high school, going to college, and at the college radio station, they, they made me the program director. And I thought to myself, this is incredible. I'm, I'm getting a degree in radio. I didn't even know they had this. So as time went on, after it was, a, it was San Antonio College, which is an incredible community college here in San Antonio, and from there I went to uh, El Paso to what is now UTEP. And while I was there, I got my first job. And my first job was working for $1.25 an hour on Sunday mornings from 5 a.m. to noon, seven hours. And Patrick, I would look at the clock and I would say, oh, good, I still have five more hours. I still have four. I still have three. To this day, that's the way I look at the clock, whether it's a podcast, whether it's in front of a, an audience, you, I think you think you've got the same, uh, um, you know, the same modus operandi, but I would literally just think to myself, I, I, this is too much fun. And then within six months, our competition was a little daytime station came to me and said, what are you making over there? I said, dollar 25 an hour says, how'd you like to make a dollar 50 full time? 
Well, I could believe it. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> and oh, so wow. within six years, I made a name for myself, gotten a national award from Billboard magazine. And then because I learned to program the radio station as well, I got a call from guess what? KTSA in San Antonio. And they hired me to be their program director and on air. Wow. So that radio station under my pillow I was not only on the air, I was running the show. And within an, a year, I got another award, and then I got the call to go to L.A. And so I went to Los Angeles and uh, I never looked back. Yeah, that's, wow, that is, what an amazing story to come back to, you know. I just, I love this story about you calling your friends and playing the show. <laughs> for, I just absolutely love that so much. I think that's so cool that your dad was, uh, pushing you to do it. Oh you know? yeah. Yeah. He was real, right. real supportive, both my mom and my dad. And you know, it's funny because that, that was the radio dream that I had. I get to LA, I'm on the radio and I do all these voices on my show. And an agent calls me and said, have you ever thought about doing cartoon work? I said, are you kidding? I, since I was a kid, he says, well, <laughs> let me have a sample of, of your, uh, of your voices and I'll see what I can do. Two weeks later, Patrick, I got my first job uh, at the Hanna-Barbera Studios, the home of Yogi Bear and that little duck. Wow. And I wasn't there as an intern. I was there to actually work with the original cast doing the second season, different voices on the Jetsons. Oh, and, wow. Oh, yeah. And it, got, it gets better than that. <laughs> I, view, I don't know if you, you knew this, but George Jetson, of course, had a boss. He worked at the Spacely Sprocket Company. Yeah. So his, his boss was Mr. Spacely. Well, the voice of Mr. Spacely was Mel Blanc, the voice of Bugs Bunny, Sylvester, Tweety, Elmer. It was unbelievable. And he's sitting right next to me because we're all in this room doing these scenes and I'm doing different voices that they need. And I couldn't wait for the break because the guy was... He was incredible. He would just give you so much of, of his uh, experience. He wasn't, you know, threatened or anything. And yeah. literally he became a mentor and we would have these conversations in the parking lot after the, the, uh, the recording session. But in time, I mean, in the time that we spent in the few months, he taught me many of his voices. Would you wow. like to hear some? Of course. Are you kidding me? Okay. Yes. All right. So here's, uh, starts out with um, Elmer Fudd, who's walk walking around with that funny little gun. You know, he's looking for. Be very, very quiet. I'm looking for a little gray rabbit. And when I find that rabbit, I'm going to tear him apart. Whim, whim, whim. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Have you seen a little gray rabbit? Big eyes, yeah. Big ears, yeah. Big teeth, yeah. I ain't seen him. Ain't I a stinker? Ooh, I thought I threw a pretty tad. I did. I did throw a pretty tad. You bet you saw a pretty tad. The pretty tad with me. Why, I'm the wildest. Rudeness, tootness, shootness. Yeah, shit up. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Holy cow. That, unbelievable, Sonny. When you, when you do cartoons... You don't hold back. You got to just uh, give it all. Is exactly, that the deal? Exactly. There's there's no uh, there's no you know meek <laughs> unless you're doing a, a little voice. Uh, but and it, and that's the way it's been for my whole life. As I I've had these wonderful uh, serendipities that have come through. Uh, and then the other part was was Disney. And in nineteen, I guess it was eighty one. I found out that there was going to be something called the Disney Channel. They were going to have yeah. their own channel with all these different shows, et cetera. And so they were looking for, for different hosts. So I didn't wait to see what they call the, you know, the trades where you get these magazines and, and you see that there's an open call for a host for this or that. I created a show and I got my agent to get me a, uh, an audience in front of what they call the suits, which is, uh, you know, the, the decision makers. And uh, so there I, I go driving to the uh, the Hanna Barbera Studios, and excuse me, not the Hanna Barbera, but the uh, the uh, Buena Vista Studios in uh, 
in Los Angeles. And I, in my, my heart was literally beating out of my chest because it says Walt Disney Studios. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this. So I walk in <laughs> and sure enough, there's three guys in suits and a lady. And they said, okay, Sonny, let's see what you got. And so I told him, I said, oh, I got this show. It's called Saturday in the Park. And I've got 20 kids and we go to parks all over the country. And the guest stars are in different parts of the park. And I'm j- doing my gyrations and everything. And at one point, the woman, the lady, she looks over at one of the guys and goes. And I thought, oh, great. They're making fun of me. But I, I, I didn't I did stop. I just kept on going. And when I was through, I expected to say for them to say, don't call us. We'll call you. Thanks a lot. What they said, though, was. That's a nice uh, that's a nice idea. It's not what we're looking for. However, with your enthusiasm, we think you'd be perfect for another show that we already have called You and Me, Kid. Would you be interested? I ended up doing one hundred and twenty episodes hosting You and Me, Kid on the Disney Channel. Wow, that's I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, I saw that in your in your thing. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Wow, what a story to get that right. So you went in for some other. Yeah, that's why you yeah. always go for it, right? That's exactly. why you always exactly. Exactly. Because it's, you know, and and I think really that's the way the universe works, you know, and you can appreciate this. I look at it as putting in your order. It's like you're at the the universe cafe and you're going through all that looks good. Oh, that looks good. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. And then you close it and and there goes. And, uh, you know, you could say that the the God is is the chef and all these things are the, the moment you see something for yourself no matter how big or how small it is already something's happening and now we know that thoughts really are things scientists tell us that thoughts have energy what uh what's important is that you have that vision of what it is you want for yourself you know i I did a, a tedx talk uh about uh something called intentional enthusiasm where you yeah. use your enthusiasm, but you you create it. And a lot of times people think, I can't be enthusiastic unless I've got something to be excited about. Yeah. But that's just the opposite. You can get excited because of your enthusiasm for what it is you want to do. And if you have that enthusiasm, believe in yourself, have a vision of what it is you want, and you are grateful, gratitude, that's the fuel for it all. You're grateful along the way for every single moment. I'll tell you, there's nothing like it. Wow. That's, that's definitely inspiring. I like that a lot. Intentional. So you sort of create the path uh, in front of you. Is that yeah, the yeah. gist of it? I mean, you have to decide what it is you want. Sure. A lot of people, they just want success they, or they want yeah. happiness, but they don't know what it is. And, and there's nothing like... Um, doing it with your purpose. Now think about this. Everybody who has a talent and we all do, and some people go their whole lifetime, not finding it, but it, the chances are, if there's something you like to do, it's probably going to be something you're good at or something that you can develop. And then if you're able to do it for the good of other people, no matter what it is, And you can be working for the Peace Corps or you can be on a stage or it doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you give back to the world through that that talent that that you're born with and your job is to find that talent and then to grow it and then to give it away. Wow. I love that. I love that a lot. Um, You know, I heard this uh, very recently. It almost feels like it was meant to be for this podcast, but I heard this quote about George Burns who had said, um, make sure I get this right, uh, better to fail at something you love to do than succeed at something you hate to do. Exactly. Uh, I thought that was really uh, so simple, but but eye-opening. You know, Paul McCartney said that if the Beatles had never happened, he would be in a pub every night playing his music. Wow. For the love of it. And you can tell. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen Paul McCartney. Love Paul uh, McCartney. I, I saw him in Austin uh, last year. And, uh, you know, I mean, the guy is like 79 years old. He goes, 
thank you. See you next year. <laughs> <laughs> and you're all like, I hope so. Yeah. I, and, 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 it, and it's true. We will see him next year. You know? 100%. <laughs> or at he's least a would machine. Have. Oh, he's, he's a machine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's a machine for sure. Well, that yeah, and, they, and you know, and it's inspiring to see people like that. You know, continue to do because, just like you said, you know, it's what they love to do. Otherwise, they yeah. would have stopped doing it, right? They would have uh, be doing something else completely. Exactly, and and you know what? It's joy. It's the joy within. Everybody has that joy, and I'll tell you what the real key is. And I've 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 kind of lived this all my life, and I I never you know thought about it until I started speaking and, uh, and kind of sharing my life stories with, with my audiences. And that is, there's a child within us all. And if you just let that child come out and play every day, I'll tell you, you can, you can have the joy of the three-year-old, a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, you know, and I, I mentioned that the little duck, um, on, um, on the, the Yogi Bear show. Well, I wanted to have my own, uh, my own character. In fact, would you like to meet him? Yeah, of course. I've, I've never done this in a podcast, so this is the first. Love it. His name is Bono Duck. <laughs> now, to get the full effect, you have to, I'm going to put my, my earpiece back in to get the full effect patrick you've got to close your eyes okay and everybody who's watching right now close your eyes and i'll tell you when to open them okay you can open them <laughs> Love who's that sleep. guy that's that's patrick what does he do is he a saint no that's that's a different patrick are we on the radio? Well, yeah, we're on the radio. We're actually on a podcast. Really? Podcast? I like it. Hi, hi mister. How are you? My hi. name is Bodo Duck. Hi, Bodo. How are you? I'm fantastic. You know what, you know what Patrick does, Bono? What? He is a chef. A chef? Yes. Is he a vegetarian? I think he can probably cook anything you want. <laughs> wow, that sounds great. Can you uh can you cook uh cucumbers and uh and uh spiders? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't uh cook for ducks uh, normally. Yeah. So, this is little Bono and he's my alter ego. And so <laughs> I love him. He's got his own YouTube channel. Yeah, this is a Bono Duck YouTube channel. Yep. I got the Bono Duck show. And tell them who you had a conversation with. Oh, you mean about the... You're talking about... Yes. <laughs> Kermit the Frog. Kermit the Frog. You can believe this. The actual Kermit the Frog had, and Bono had a radio conversation together. And Kermit said to Bono, I wish I had your voice. Wow. And what did you say? I said, I wish I had your voice. Yeah. He said, oh, hi. Hi, uh, Bono, I wish I had your voice. Yeah, I wish I had your voice too, Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think it's time for your nap. Again? Again, okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is... Yeah, if you want to see little Bono, he's got his little uh, set. Uh, we just built it. Uh, just go to YouTube and, and type in Bono Duck. B-O-N-O-D-U-C-K. Not Bono, B Bono. <laughs> not yeah not bono <laughs> oh, no, i love that wow that's unbelievable that is um, and you, you know it's funny patrick um oh for the longest time you know bono was on my radio show and and a lot of people didn't know that it was my voice they thought it was somebody else because they could swear that uh i was laughing while he was talking <laughs> well and so I, I i really didn't do him in person and my wife said to me says she says, you know, you've got, you've got little Bono, take him out. People don't care. And it's true. You know, Jim Henson, when he created Kermit the Frog, in fact, he was on the Tonight Show um, and uh, he was explaining to Johnny Carson, he says, I'm not a ventriloquist, but people don't care. They don't mind. Because if you buy into the character, you have fun with the character, 
The gift is that joy that you get. It's the same thing with, with, with impressions. You know, um, my, one of my favorite impressions was uh, Peter Falk as Columbo. And, oh my God. You know, he Love always Columbo. had that, yeah. that false. Uh, if he was here right now, he'd say, uh, I don't want to bother anybody, but uh, is this Patrick? Yes. Um, I, am I bothering you? You know, I'm, my wife actually listens to your podcast. My wife thinks you're the greatest. I'm awfully sorry. I got to go. Am I bothering you? <laughs> oh, my God, Sonny. That's, that like the, that's so spot on. I mean, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Wow. Holy Thanks. cow. I love Columbo, too. Made, oh, such oh a, I know. I know. Yeah. He was just a great, great character. <laughs> Great character. I love him as just Peter Falk as an actor too. Other stuff. He's oh right? yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, he was brilliant. He was just brilliant. brilliant. He, yeah, brilliant. And, and you mentioned uh, George Burns, another one of my favorites. Um, yeah. George Burns was in a in a uh, restaurant. A friend of mine told me this. He said that he belonged to a, a club. This, my friend did a club called the Centurion Club, and uh, they would each about everybody in the, in the club would be looking out for people who were a hundred years old to come and speak to them about life. And these guys were all in their thirties and forties. And so one day he was at a restaurant in uh, Beverly Hills and he sees George Burns and he goes, Oh my God, I can't believe oh my, we can get George Burns to talk to our group. <laughs> so George Burns gets up to go to the bathroom. So he's waiting outside and they're outside the restroom, the men's room, and George Burns comes out and he says, Mr. Burns, I believe he's talking a mile a minute. And, he says, and I'd love you to be on our show. Uh, we have some centurions that they speak. And, and so George Burns looking at this, I'm 99. And he walks off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that poor uh, guy. That poor yeah. guy gave that whole speech, right? Like, yeah, guess, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that is too that is too funny. Well, that's a spot on uh impression there too. Do you work on the so you learn when you're 11 to do the voices, so I'm assuming just right you talk you've just practice it, right? You've got a, like a muscle yeah, and, muscle and, you got to work. Know, it, it's really it's the key. You know, there's two things, there's two parts of an impression. For instance, with Columbo or let's do, let's do Bugs Bunny. And you can try this at home, but um, maybe not in front of uh, your wife. But, uh, <laughs> you know, with Bugs Bunny, there's two things. One is the, the accent, the attitude, and the other one is the key. And the key is what the pitch is. In fact, uh, it's so funny, Mel, uh, Mel Blanc told me that, the way he got Bugs Bunny was quite by accident. He lived in L.A. They wanted him to do this voice of this, this rabbit with an attitude. That's all they said. And they <laughs> flew him out to, to New York uh, to, do a, to do a session. So he goes up there, and, and he doesn't have a clue what he's going to make him sound like. But he just knows it's going to be something that, that's, that's going to have you know, some kind of a, of a character that that'll kind of jump out at you. He gets in the cab from the, uh, from the hotel room and the cab driver says, eh, what to Mac? And the cab driver keeps talking about the, the Dodgers and all these different things. And he keeps saying, Hey, yeah, well, yeah, hey, doc, hey doc, what, what, what hotel are you on? What are we going? What does the studio? And so he kept the guy talking and see when you do impressions, you're 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 literally have a, a recorder inside you. And so we hear all these different voices and we hear an accent and we hear something that's oh my gosh, that's great. It's almost like you're you're adding them to your collection. So he gets to the session and they show him the storyboard and he says, Oh, I see him with uh, kind of like a Brooklyn Brooklyn accent, kind of like a eh, man, what's up, Doc? And they loved it. And it was great, but he didn't tell them that <laughs> he, had, uh, he had ripped off this, uh, this cab driver, uh, you know, just like a few minutes before. That's but, an uh, unbelievable story. But to do Bugs Bunny, you start with, eh, try this, okay? Okay, okay. try this. Eh. All right, my, my turn. I do it. Yeah. Okay. Eh. Am I doing it? Eh. That's good. That's good. That better? Eh. Eh. Now, Without the without the e, just say, 
what's up, Doc? Like, have an attitude like, what's up, Doc? Just what's in your up, Doc? Yeah. What's up, Doc? Now, put the two together. Eh, what's up, Doc? Eh, what's up, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> I love, I don't think I've ever had anybody go, what's up? What's up, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, bring, you know I'm bringing what? that modern flavor. No, you know, that's okay. Like... I have, I have, I have grown men come up to me afterwards, and they go, "Hey, listen to this," and they do a cartoon voice, or they do, you know, Elmer Fudd, or they do whatever. Or I had uh, emails from women saying, "All the way home in the car, I tell all, all he would do is, yeah. you know, Mickey Mouse and <laughs> different voices." <laughs> oh man, I bet that's yeah. That's a, what's the what's probably the biggest uh, voice you get. You think what, what do you think is the most common? Well, b besides Bono Duck, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People people like the uh, the, the different. You know when? Um, do you remember the show um, Fantasy Island? Yeah, with Ricardo Montalban, Mont 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 and uh, Tattoo and Harvey Villachez, yeah. yeah, Bass, Bass, that, what the what that lady over there? Ah, uh, tattoo. In fact, there was a there was an episode where I did the voice of of Mr. Rourke, but he was Mr. Rocket, and the the Jetsons went to Fantasy Planet, and and then Tattoo was actually a two headed little guy, and I did both the the voice. Uh, I did one voice, and another um, uh, gentleman did the other voice, but uh, Tattoo's in. But look at that with that lady over there. Ah, tattoo. That is Jane Jetson. Boss, I like the way her hair flips up in the back. She's pretty. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it, Sonny. That is so awesome. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah, that is just so cool. <laughs> you're, you're the believe. perfect audience. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love my job, man. Just like you, like the time I look at the time going, oh, I got more time. I got I'm always trying to push it because I just love the conversations I get to have. I bet uh, with people uh, throughout the way, man, this is, I just can't believe you got to work on the Jetsons. I used to watch the Jetsons yeah. so much growing up. I mean, it's just unreal. It just, now, so I don't much. know if you remember, but back in the seventies, it was also a, 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 one of the cop shows was called Beretta with Robert Blake. Yeah. I remember and, Beretta. And had, yeah. I watched, well, re I watched, uh, you know, repeats or whatever. Sure. Like, and remember uh, Fred, the cockatoo, his little cockatoo. Yeah. Guess who was the voice of Fred the Cockatoo? No way. Yep. What? Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, Beretta. Oh. That is so awesome. Oh, my gosh. You Do people ask you to do voicemails for them? Like voicemail messages? Oh, big time. And you know yeah. what? I, I love it. Like, I uh, you know, people will say, uh, I just, because uh, we, Bono Duck just did a, just a little video. And he sang uh, uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Uh, and this this lady she says i just showed it my son he loves it so i said what's what's your son's name and she told me so bono's going to record a little uh, little message to them you know oh and, man and, it's, and that's you know that's what it's all about it's like it's that it's that paul mccartney I'll, i'd be in a pub every night and how great it is that we get to do what we do i mean i can imagine how many times you brought out a surprise dessert for somebody or done something that they didn't expect for and sure. the joy that you get when you yeah. see their look on their face. Go, oh my God, this is great. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's why we do it. Yeah. That's a good point. That, that's a great analogy to, uh, to put it that way. That, that's amazing. Uh, look, I have two nephews named Cooper and Clark. Could you do like a little, me do. Uh, uh, a little message for them? Sure, uh, my, sure. bro my brother would love that. He listens <laughs> okay. to the podcast, so he'll be listening to this and then he'll play. All right. It for so Cooper and Clark. Okay. Yeah. How about uh, we bring in some uh, new characters? Uh, here's um, Mickey Mouse, Goofy and Donald Duck. Okay. Start with Mickey. Oh, hiya, boys and girls. It's your old pal, Mickey. Hey, Cooper. Hey, Clark, uh, I'm so glad you're here because I think I've got Goofy. He's a little shy. Hey, Goofy, come and say hi to, to Clark, Andy, and Cooper. Oh, gosh, Mickey. Uh, <laughs> oh, hiya, Clark. <laughs> uh, uh, hi, Cooper. Uh, <laughs> but so bashful. It's okay. Oh, here comes Donald. He woke up on the wrong side of the pond. Hey, Donald, come on. Say hello to Cooper and Clark. 
There you go. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely amazing. So that, thank you so much, man. My brother is gonna love those. My my nephews are gonna love that. They're gonna love me for Christmas. I'm gonna get all the hugs for that. <laughs> just FYI, I'm gonna get all the credit. Uh, so thank you for that. That's oh humble. yeah, you you have to you have to email me and let me know what they said. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. know, I close my eyes and it's just like. I just see the characters. It's so spot on. It's just so spot on to do that. Well, thank like, you. Unbelievable. Thank you. Uh, yeah, gosh, that's just unbelievable. I love this. You know, how do you think of, uh, you know, characters? How does that come about? I mean, is it just accident like Bodo? To die? How did that happen? Was it just? Well, Bono was, Bono was born from the little duck that I saw, although Bono's voice is completely different because yeah. You know, the, these duck voices are all like here and Bono is, is from here. And okay. Bono, really, to tell you the truth, when I talk to Bono, I'm just as entertained as you are. I don't know what's going to come out of his mouth. <laughs> I love that. The conversations that we have and sometimes they're in the car because I'm already thinking of how, you know, we can use this on the radio or on his podcast or in a show or whatever. And Bono is, is a three to five year old and everybody has a nephew and niece, uh, a grandson, a son. And when they're that age, you're constantly saying, Oh, you're not, you're not going to guess what Cooper said. You're not going to guess what, uh, what, what they said. To, and then they tell you, and it's like, you couldn't make it up. It, there's nothing yeah. like it. And Bono's yes. the same way. Bono will say these different Bono had a joke book. And he's telling me these jokes. And, and I said, and uh, they're all duck jokes. And so <laughs> Bono will tell the joke and then he'll give the punchline and then he'll say, I don't get it. <laughs> 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 it's his joke book, right? <laughs> so we've incorporated that into, uh, into his little radio show and we call it the lame duck joke of the day. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. So, uh, oh man! So, but but again, I I don't know, and I'm 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 always you know interested in knowing what he's going to say uh, as uh, as time goes on. That's actually fantastic to hear that you're along for the ride, just like the person yeah. uh, watching yeah. it. Because to be honest with you, you know, you were saying earlier about you know Jim Henson, like people don't care about the you know th that's true. Look, when I'm watching you do that, I'm watching the care. I'm watching the the character. I mean. I'm not watching you in a, in a lot of ways, right? I'm just, I'm focused on that. No, and the, no, exactly. the more, the more yeah. you believe it, the more exactly. I believe it. That's the, the more truth. you buy into it, the, the greater the gift. Correct. That person is actually there. Yeah. Know? It feels like they're real. I mean, that's what's so, that's what's so crazy about it. It's like, you know, it's not real, but it's sure feels real, you know? And that's, what's so great about it. God, I love that. Well, you know, um, a lot of times you get, um, you, you you come up with a voice by necessity or, you know, you, you've got to do it. I had a, a call one time from a producer in L.A. that I'd worked with. And he said, I'm, I'm so glad I found you because we've gone all over the place and we can't get anybody to do this voice. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld has a movie coming out. It's called The B Movie. Yeah, I remember a, that movie. With Spielberg and he got together and, and just had this fun, fun movie. He's a, you know, he's a real B, but he's also an animated B. And they had a, 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 a game, Activision had a, a game that was uh, coming out and they had to do a commercial for it. And Seinfeld was out of the country. So they needed somebody to do Seinfeld as excited flying through New York as a bee. And um, I remember I said, give me a, give me 48 hours. <laughs> cause then, cause I didn't do Seinfeld because, and everybody does the, the typical, who are these people? What's the deal? You know, that, that <laughs> sounds like a cliche, right? So I remember that, that Seinfeld, because I, I had introduced him once uh, in L.A., and I remembered in his routine, he did this a bit about how a dog doesn't know that you're the owner. He just knows that you're the guy that gives him that food. And so whenever, <laughs> whenever you walk in, he says, it's that guy. That's the guy. I can't believe it. Kramer! <laughs> and so I used that to get myself into character. 
and then did all the different voices, uh, different all the different lines that they wanted for the uh, for the spot. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome! Uh, wow, that's unbelievable. Did you? I mean, I'm sure maybe it didn't happen. But did you get any feedback like that he had heard it or seen it or something? No, and, no, you, you you never do. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, another yeah. one was there was a there was a, a contest. Um, Nabisco had a contest for the new voice of the parquet talking tub. Remember that? Yeah. Butter? Parquet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, they, they had this nationwide, they, they were looking for somebody. And so what I did was I, I submitted my version of the talking tub, which is butter, 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 parquet. In Spanish. <laughs> yeah, I did Spanish. it in Spanish. Yeah. It was mantequilla, mantequilla, mantequilla. Por qué? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love that. <laughs> and I got the job. Oh, wh- what? Oh, shit. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, that yeah. is so. so. I remember those commercials. Yeah, but my my advice and and I and then again you know when I speak when I when I give my uh, speak from my heart, I, I my advice is that not though don't hold back, you know you don't have to please anyone but yourself. It doesn't yeah. matter. Be that kid, you know these you know, these youngsters, these little three year olds, five they don't care. They're not saying oh what they're gonna think about me when I say this. No, they just say stuff. Yeah. And it's okay to, to just let it out because for two reasons, one, you never know what's going to come out, the creativity, but the other one is the joy you're going to give whoever it is you're, you're giving that to. Wow. That's awesome. Absolutely. To- totally agree with that. Wow. That's just unbelievable. I just can't tell you how inspiring you are, Sonny. This is so great. So yeah, this is amazing. Um, so, so Thank what's you. like, what's on the plan for, I guess, the rest of the year? Just kind of sitting tight and, like we talked earlier, just sort of sitting tight with that well, stuff. Well, no, I mean, now that I'm doing virtual, in fact, I just became certified. I'm doing virtual keynotes. Um, in fact, I did a virtual keynote for San Antonio College, the college that I went to. Nice. Uh, I spoke to the uh, to the graduates, and then they that went over so well. They said we want you to talk to the to the uh, the staff and faculty, and I and I did that. But again, we're doing it through Zoom. But at the same time, you're you're making contact with that one person. We're doing a thing this Saturday night. All the students that are graduating can't go to the the big coliseum and have the typical you know graduation. And from the moment they set foot on campus, they were already thinking about it you know two years ago. And then all of a sudden, it's like oh no. So yeah. the college and the college president is incredible. His name is Dr. Robert Vela. He said, let's do something on campus in their cars. We'll call it graduation in motion. So they expect like about 700 cars with the family members inside the cars. They're going to be on parking lots all throughout. And then when they're ready to go, They'll bring them through the entire campus and they're going to have all kinds of stuff, fireworks and people cheering them and lights. So it's going to be a night they will never forget and possibly a night that no one would ever be able to do. So it's, you know, it's, it's that pivoting. It's that when life gives you, you know, lemons, make lemonade. I make margaritas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like I'm going over your house, honey. That that's what yeah, I that, <laughs> that, I'm all <laughs> I'm all about that. Well, you know what? That's very inspiring uh, to hear that the college is doing that and uh yeah, it's going to be a unique uh, experience uh for those graduates for sure. No no one else will probably go yeah. through something like that again. So, yeah, that's um I'm glad they get to do something. I, I think that's definitely I uh, definitely feel bad for a lot of students, high school students that didn't get their full graduation in May, yeah. co- college as well. Obviously, it's something you look forward to. So, yeah, it's a bit disappointing. But, yeah, inspiring to hear that, you know, look, we're Americans, we're Texans, we're humans. Exactly. We exactly. can per- persevere. So, uh, yeah, that's especially inspiring. In Texas. Ah, especially in Texas. Yes. Uh, I oh, always say I'm a t- Texan first. I live in Austin. Oh, you're in all you're right up the freeway. 
Yeah, I'm in yeah. Austin here. South Congress and uh, Ben White, basically, is where I'm Oh, at. okay. Great. Well, South next East. time, I'm, we're going to have to get together for, uh, for a so socially distanced lunch. I would love uh, that. Absolutely. All about getting some food. Uh, you know, I know a lot of great places in town, and I would love to take you out to to eat some food somewhere um sunny i'll, I'll definitely it. uh send you my my info and i'm definitely going to let you know um what my nephews thought about that stuff. they're going to love it i'm yeah, telling you they're going do. to they're going to freak <laughs> out i'm telling you right now they're going to freak out i can already see their faces like just mouth, mouth wide open like is he talking about us that's what they're going to say is he talking about <laughs> us no way no <laughs> way uh, they're going to love it sunny it's going to make uh their year man so i really appreciate I that so. and and again i just Thanks. appreciate what you've given our listeners and our viewers today just an unbelievable episode just really got to tell you that this has been intentional phenomenal intentional enthusiasm nothing like it i'm t there's so many things i'm taking away from this today for my life so just fyi i want you to know <laughs> that and that doesn't well, happen you know, with every podcast uh, let's be real the word enthusiasm comes from the greek en theos in spirit so when you're enthusiastic you're letting your spirit within come out and we're all born with it. I mean, look at babies. Babies are not born sad. They're not <laughs> born, you know, they don't have emotions like we do. They, they don't, they're not programmed. And as time goes on, they either keep that with them. I was one of the lucky ones or, or they don't. And I believe you do too. You did as well as, you know, the, the people that we tend to surround ourselves with and sure. that, 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 that joy, there's nothing like that, that childlike joy and curiosity. Uh, yeah. I heard a, a quote from um, Albert Einstein. He said, I really didn't have any talent. I am just so passionately curious. Wow. And, I love that. I'm stealing you know, that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stealing that. I'm stealing that. That's me right there. I have zero talent, but I got a lot of curiosity. You know, my father always used to say, uh, rest in peace to my father. But he always used to tell me, uh, when I was a kid, my brother was more the serious one and I was, you know, whatever. And he would say, uh, pa Patrick, you never take anything seriously. You know, you j everything's a joke to you. You know, you'd always say, I mean, literally to the day he passed away, you know, it to was us, always, that's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. To me, that was a, I was like, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I, I, that's me. I don't want to take everything. I agree. Seriously. Best uh, advice I ever got was don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And my father would say it in jest, you know, he would say it laughing, you know, just, uh, yeah. you know, laughingly. Uh, so yeah, again, this has just been such a wonderful conversation. Sonny. I can't, I can't thank you again enough uh, for taking the time you. Uh, today you. out of your schedule and just really appreciate it. So uh, okay, Lowe, before you. we go, just yes. tell everybody how they can connect with you online and, and that sort of stuff. Okay. So uh, Twitter is at Sonny Melendres, um, Instagram at Sonny Melendres, even TikTok at Sonny Melendres uh, and Whoa, online. Oh, TikTok. I love you it. it. <laughs> Sonny, and even Bono's got his own little TikTok uh, as well. But if you go to SonnyMelendres.com and also if you want to hear my podcast, uh, wherever you get your podcast, just type in Sonny Melendra's show and, uh, you, you'll be there. So, you know, we'll, we'll kind of cross pollinate there with, uh, with our list. Of course. Of I'll course. Absolutely. Same. No, definitely want, want everyone to check out your podcast, check out your social media. Absolutely. Uh, for sure. Uh, well, great. Okay. So you said your website too, right? Just make it sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. SonnyMelendres.com. Awesome. And, and let me just say, uh, Patrick, congratulations to you, you know, uh, there are a lot of podcasts out there. And when I got invited to be on, on your show, I was looking at the guests that you had and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is incredible. You know, because you, you set out to, to have an excuse to talk to people that you wanted to talk to. And not only uh, are you, you know, a true podcaster, but you do it in such a great way. I mean, look at, look at your studio there. And look at the, the way that you conduct it. <laughs> and I'm glad that uh, early on, I found out that this was actually the podcast, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the rehearsal. <laughs> but anyway, I congratulate you. I commend you. And I want to tell you that uh, as a Texan, I'm proud of you. Wow. That, that means so much to me, Sonny. I can't tell you that. That, that really means a lot to me, man. That, I, I really appreciate that. We work really hard on this podcast. So I appreciate uh, those kind words. And, and from you. That that is uh, saying a lot. Uh, so yeah, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, My pleasure. Well, Sunny, 
Well, listen, I, I, you know, my best to you and your family uh, during this time. I hope you guys stay safe out there. And um, yeah, again, I'll, I'll send you all that info. And um, yeah, again, my best to you. Stay safe. And uh, we'll talk soon, Sonny. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye, Patrick. Bye-bye. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. <laughs>